Hello and welcome to Foul Race First Community. This week's race was A-Class Sedan Cars. Uh, the first round was at Camino Veo and there was already a crash as we come into the first corner. There's another car going sideways, not sure if he was assisted or not, probably was, as we all pile down towards the hairpin. And this track was likely to cause a few kind of chaos on the opening lap and sure enough, uh, Lincoln Continental gets it all wrong in front of me and then I crash to avoid him. Uh, so I didn't have the greatest of starts. Uh, ignore the fact my car is smoking, Forza is being funny with the damage. My car did not have engine damage, it had probably suspension and brakes I think and some aero. It, the engine's fine. Um, <laughs> as you can see, the Cadillac is mighty fast in a straight line. Up at the front, and a Mitsubishi Galant had taken the lead for all of... almost got to the end of the first lap before a very fast Mercedes <laughs> finds his way past. Um, yeah, the grid's on random as per normal, so you never quite know where you're going to start. I think the Mercedes actually started on pole. Mitsubishi got a good sort of, I say, start down the opening bit, managed to take the lead, but uh, <laughs> quickly fell back down to fourth. Um, that Mercedes is incredibly fast and it shouldn't really be that fast. Nobody expected Mercedes to do particularly well, uh, certainly not to be leading <laughs> by the start of the second lap. Uh, so yeah, you, there was a good variety of cars as well actually, I have to say. There was lots of different cars, which is good. I was expecting there to be many, many M5s and there was some, but there wasn't a huge amount. Um, this is, I think it's another lap or so on, and there was some pretty damn good racing uh, going on here between all sorts of cars, and there was sort of a fairly large group at the moment. This is for the lower end of the top 10 positions, I believe, between a Mitsubishi Evo and a Maserati Quattroporte. Camino Zordo is a very hard track to build a car for. Do you go for straight line speed, or do you go for handling, because both are very important around here. The Maserati was much faster at a straight line, as you see, he managed to get the move done long before he ever got to the corner. However, the Evo is far, far better through the corners, and manages to get the place back as the Maserati struggles to get turned and everything. So, yeah, it's a, it's a tough track to build a car for on here. The Mitsubishi was sadly starting to fall back a little bit uh, through the field, I'm not sure. I think that was the Evo that just went past. No, it wasn't. It was a Mercedes. I'll try and remember cars. It's very hard to see. Um, yeah, the Mitsubishi was beginning to fall through the field up ahead. There's a Mercedes and an Evo and a Maserati all trying to go three wide and doesn't quite work <laughs> like that. You're not going to fit three wide through there because as they're battling, they're all going to slow each other down. There's a little bit of a laggy collision going on there, uh, which is, yeah. <laughs> uh, connections, I hate you so much because that killed me and it killed the Mitsubishi and the Maserati. I don't know why it did, why, what on earth went on there. I don't know why it decided to do that. I was dead um, well, I wasn't actually quite as dead as the Mitsubishi was, but I was facing the wrong way. I had to wait for everybody to go past. So that was me out of the race. Maserati was pretty damaged, and the Mitsubishi was fairly killed as well. Back up towards the front, and there was a change of position for second, as the Porsche manages to kind of muscle its way past. Um, up to the air. The Porsches, I was actually expecting the Porsches to be a lot faster in a straight line than they were. I mean, the, it's quicker than the Volvo, which is... Um, not particularly hard. That Volvo is very, very good through the corners. You'll see the, how, how much the Porsche sort of gains down here. You'll see the size of the gap and then see how much the Volvo gains through the corners. Yeah, I was actually expecting the Porsches to be quicker in a straight line than they were. But uh, there you go. <laughs> Volvo's right back on it through the corners. Yeah, the Porsches, they're not the pretty. I don't know why everybody calls them quite so ugly. I mean, they're not the prettiest car in the world, but I wouldn't say they were atrociously ugly. Um, but anyway, that's, that's just me. Um, you would have just about seen shot that I was about to be lapped <laughs> in the Mitsubishi. We're going to go and lap down because we had to pit because our cars were destroyed pretty much. Uh, what have we got going on now? We've got some. We haven't got some M5s. Told you there were two of them, um, and that was there wasn't. There really wasn't as many M5s as I was expecting um, in this one. Uh, the police police liveried one that got spun around at the start. I don't think he suffered too much damage. He just facing the wrong way and was making his way back through the field. Again, it's very hard to tell what levels of damage cars have on here because it, keep, it just changes if you jump around the replay to different points of view and stuff. You'll come back to a car and the damage will be completely different. So this white BMW might have had a bit of engine damage, but I don't really know. Either way, it was a fairly impressive move around the outside and they just about got away with it. It was a little bit close. I'm not sure if there's any contact. The camera doesn't show it very well. But uh, yeah, that police, police livery BMW is very quick um, uh, at this stage of the race. 
further back and we have an Aston Martin. The Aston Martin had a crash going into the hairpin uh, on one of the early laps and was now trying to recover. So he does have some damage. I don't think he took any engine damage in this. Of course, these guys had all gained sort of two or three positions um, and didn't have to worry about all the cars that got broken. Uh, so this was now for around fifth and sixth. Uh, again, this Mitsubishi was proving very, very difficult to pass. The Aston Martin has a fairly large amount of straight line speed. I don't think anything was quicker than my Cadillac in a straight line, but everything handled better. Uh, you can see the Aston Martin got a very good run out of that corner, got so much straight line speed, but uh, really can't do much about it as the Evo goes to kind of defend the inside. You can just look how much <laughs> how much gap the Evo gets on the exit of the corner. as because it handles well. I'm not sure, I presume it was still four-wheel drive. I don't think you can make Evo's rear-wheel drive. But uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the Evo 6 was very, very difficult to overtake. At the front, and things have been relatively calm for the Mercedes. Uh, this is the final lap, although he was being caught, and that slight slide out of that corner isn't going to help much as the Volvo is now right on the back end. At some point, the Volvo gets past the Porsche. Not quite sure when that happened, didn't see it. Um, so, as we come up towards the final corner, the Mercedes is under an awful lot of pressure. Of course, he's going to go defensive, try and hug the inside line. The Volvo has got so much more grip and is trying to find a way past on the exit. There is a little bit of pushing. Uh, the Mercedes gets assisted a little bit, but uh, <laughs> Mercedes ends up taking the win. The Volvo comes in second, and the Porsche ends up in third. I believe the fastest lap went to the Volvo. I'm not sure on that one, though. Um, either way, it was a fairly entertaining race. I think I ended up in about 14th. Not the most successful one for me. Anyway, we move on to race number two at Road Atlanta Full. I was looking forward to this track. This is where I thought the Cadillac would be strong, as I have an awful lot of straight line speed. First corner, and there is a little bit of argy-bargy. Uh, Saab has ended off up the road and gets taken out by a Mercedes that was having a crash as well. Uh, so I feel sorry for the Saab. Got a little bit bullied in that first corner. Anyway, uh, by the end of uh, sort of two or three corners in, the the Lexus, I believe it was, it started fairly close to me. Uh, we both managed to make our way up to first and second. Not quite sure how I managed to get away with that as a Pontiac G8 goes and finds a wall somewhere. Don't know how you quite go that far wrong, but uh, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, we both started fairly low down the order, uh, and we had worked our way up to the front of the uh, of the of the running. I will apologise to people. There were connection issues again. There's only 11 or 12 cars running in this one because the connections are useless. Uh, I don't know what's going on with it. It's, the first race was fine. Everybody got connected fine in the first race, and then the second and third race was useless. Anyway, further down the order, there were some broken bits, quite a few broken bits. <laughs> in fact, the Pontiac, when you saw that have a crash, the Saab got destroyed. Um, and I'm not sure what happened to the Holden that managed to go around the pair of them. Well done on that one. Yeah, there was quite a few damaged cars. I think the, the first couple of corners were a little bit chaotic. Uh, so there are a few smoking cars and broken things, which wasn't particularly good. At the front, and we had pulled a massive margin. I think this is the second or third lap. Uh, I was catching up to the Lexus, um, but it was really tricky in the Cadillac, and I eventually pushed it too hard, flattered the curb, and went for a bit of a spin. Amazingly, despite the fact I hit that wall pretty damn hard, because the main impact was sort of uh, backwards into the wall, AI didn't take any major damage. I don't know how I got away with that. I just lost a, quite a lot of time. Um, as far as actual kind of close racing goes, this was as good as it got. This is for third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, there is an Alpha 155, another orange car. Uh, orange cars were in one, two, three at this point. Um, yes, there is a, an Alpha 155 that has very good handling, not particularly good straight line speed. As you can see, there is a Porsche Panamera going very, very quickly. And behind him, and even faster than that, behind all of them, is a Subaru Legacy. I think it's a Legacy. And they're going to try and go three wide. That's always scary as they go into the chicane. The Porsche doesn't give the Subaru any room. Uh, so the Subaru ends up on the grass and is sluggish off the corner. The Alpha has nowhere to go. And now that's broken the Alpha as well. You'll see his engine is pretty damaged. Uh, I think that's a, that's a genuine smoking engine on this, on this occasion. The Subaru, well, he got hit in the rear, so a bit of aero damage, maybe the diff. But uh, nothing major in that, so the Subaru is fairly straightforward pass. Um, that Subaru is incredibly quick in a straight line as well. That thing is a monster uh, when it comes to straight line speed. We'll see again. Uh, this is, I'm not sure if this is a lap later or if it's later on in, in that lap. The Subaru is very, very, very fast. Uh, probably, well, I don't know if it's quicker than the Cadillac. I never got, I never got the chance to, uh, to compare it. But as they come out onto the straight, the Porsche initial acceleration is fairly even between them. But uh, once they get going, the Subaru is 
I'm impressed. I wasn't expecting to have the Subaru as probably the quickest car here. Uh, I was expecting the Porsches to be fast. In fact, I was expecting the M5s to be the fastest, but there wasn't very many of it. There wasn't any of the new ones anyway, which uh, surprised me. Uh, either way, the Subaru kind of goes back to the outside. Uh, obviously doesn't really feel the need to defend. I'm, I'm a bit confused by that move. I wouldn't have put my car over there. Uh, the Porsche dives up the inside, cuts the corner, and ends up coming back out um, in front. Yeah, that's an odd move. I would have kept my car on the inside and I wouldn't have gone back to the outside because it's so easy for someone to have a lunch. Now this is a couple of laps later. Um, the Ford Taurus here is a back market. The Porsche and the Subaru, nothing much was happening in this race at this point. Uh, the Ford, uh, the Porsche and the Subaru are catching up to lap the Taurus. Wait for it, there's a magic trick and they're gone. Uh, <laughs> I don't know quite why, but there was a massive lag spike and it took out half the lobby. Uh, so instead of being 12 cars, there were now six running. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love it when the uh, servers work. <laughs> yeah, I can't do much about that one. So yeah, a lot of the lobby all got disconnected at once. Uh, and I don't really know why. <laughs> yeah, so uh, not much happened uh, from then on really. Everybody was very spread out. Um, I think, I'm not sure if this is the, I think this is the last lap now. Uh, the Lexus had held on to the lead. I was catching him rather quickly. After my little accident, uh, I was catched about a second, second and a half a lap, but I was quite a long way back, so it was a rather tall order. Although, well done to the Lexus driver. He held his nerve, didn't make any silly mistakes. Um, and, yeah, didn't, didn't put a wheel on the grass, didn't outbreak himself anywhere, didn't get too sideways anywhere, uh, and managed to hold on to the lead. Uh, it was shaping up to be quite an interesting race. It is a shame that it was. Shame that I crashed and shame that everything broke as well uh, for, for the people further back. Uh, so it was a fairly straightforward for the Lexus. I came in second and amazingly the very broken Alpha ended up coming in third uh, because of all the disconnections. So the orange cars got first, second and third. Woohoo! See, that's the colour you should paint your cars from now on. Uh, anyway, we move on to race number three. This is at the Sebring Full Circuit. Uh, very long circuit. I don't think I've ever been on this track for a video. can't think I've ever used it because it's too long, really, for most of the stuff that we do. Uh, I was The reason I chose this track, actually, because I thought the first corner wouldn't cause too, many ca too much chaos because it's very, very wide. Unfortunately, one car did uh, have a little bit of an off. I don't know if he got hit by somebody or what happened quite over there. Yes, that is a Chevy Volt. No does. I don't know why it's here either, but it is. <laughs> this is running in this race. Uh, we come towards, sort of, the, through this first section. I'm trying to find my way past again. I had I was starting on the back row alongside that green Carlton. <laughs> I'm trying to hug the inside, trying to avoid running into anybody. And managed to get away with that one. As the Carlton gets pushed out a little bit wide, I think, by the Volt. We come on to the back straight and you can see the speed of the Cadillac. It is very, very fast in a straight line, although I did get held up a little bit behind the Mercedes. Come into the hairpin now. This is always scary for the first time. The Mercedes is all crossed up. Well done for saving that one. That was very nearly a nasty accident. Uh, there, yeah, when you're going into the corner all sort of locked up and sliding, that's very scary when you're alongside somebody anyway that's doing that. Uh, we come down onto another straight again. You can see the speed of the Cadillac. Not quite sure what goes on here. There's a very laggy Lexus. I presume that was lag anyway. And as we come at, into the braking zone, the Lexus then goes straight into the back of me and I go pirouetting across the grass. Again, not sure if that was just genuinely someone missed their brakes or whether the lag fired the car um, into the back of mine. It is very hard to say. And then I just about managed to rejoin the track without causing too many incidences. And now I've got to go and fight my way back up through the order. At the front, things were equally exciting. Um, they'd broken away fairly early on. They'd avoided all of the chaos. Uh, this Alpha had actually started in the middle of the field and had managed to get to first by the second corner, I think. So a very impressive start. However, the Aston Martin wasn't giving up. I'm actually surprised that the Aston Martin isn't faster than a straight line. I was expecting the Aston to be gone. I mean, it is the faster of the two, but uh, not by a huge amount as they come in towards the final corner. I hate this corner. Uh, it's just... It's such a terrible corner. There's like a million different lines you can take and nobody really knows what they're doing with it. It's terribly bumpy. Not very good for overtaking. Uh, yeah, I don't like that corner. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm certainly not a fan. Anyway, as they come up towards the... I think this is on this on the start of the second lap now. And the Alpha is going to have a look. He's going to have a dive. He's thinking about it. Uh, the Alpha has... Um, I would. There's not massive difference in these two cars. I would say the Alpha is slightly better through the corners. And the Aston Martin is slightly better in a straight line. The Alpha is again is having a little bit of a look uh, into the second corner. Now, people, that's what you're supposed to do if you're on the outside there. What the Aston Martin did. It would be very easy for the Aston Martin to have turned in. Uh, because the Alpha wasn't really alongside him. 
But if he had, he probably would, or the back of his car would have gone, gone across the front of the Alphas and the Aston would be facing the wrong way. So you've got to give each other enough space. Um, even if the car is quite exactly alongside you, you've got to be careful because um, it's very easy to spin your car out on somebody else and it's not really their fault. Um, anyway, there's still nose to tail for the first half of this lap. The Alphas trying to find a way past. It's very tricky overtaking a car that uh, is faster than you in a straight line and the Alpha was finding that a little bit. However, he has got a good run out of, or sort of onto this straight. He's going to try and outbreak him. Uh, it's not quite worked. Just outbreaked himself a little bit there. Aston Martin can have a fairly easy cutback on that one. Further back and me and the Carlton were back together again uh, and we were trying to fight our way back through the order. We both had a few knocks and both cars had a little bit of aero damage. Nothing major. Uh, I'm trying to go around the outside of the Carlton and luckily, thanks to the sort of straight line speed acceleration of that Cadillac, I can just about pull it off. Uh, now we're catching up to an M5, which both of us were faster than it in a straight line. I'm trying to go to the outside, didn't realise the Carlton was going to take a dive up the inside. We both swoop past the M5 and I try going around the outside but can't quite do it. Now I've got to fall in line behind the Carlton. That's probably one of the most impressive overtakes I've ever been a part of. Uh, well done to the Carlton for getting that one up. Well done to BMW as well for not causing an accident. They were really tricky to do uh, when everybody's doing that. So many times that goes wrong. But we managed to get away with it that time, which is which is good. Uh, it was very scary. <laughs> Anyway, coming through the next corner, I get sort of clogged the curb a little bit too much, go up on two wheels. Uh, yeah, that's not a good idea, as you will see later. <laughs> the Carlton then gets it all wrong going through these next sort of corners, ends up all out of place, out of line. Uh, you don't really want to be doing that as we go on to the straight, the natural habitat for the Cadillac CTSV. Um, the Cadillac is a, it starts off as an A-class car, so I didn't really have a huge amount I could do with it. I think it has, I'm sure, I think it has race tyres, race suspension, race brakes. The power is absolutely standard, but it has 500 odd horsepower, which makes it very quick in a straight line. Uh, the Carlton is not bad though. I was surprised how quick that was. As you come around the final corner again, no one's really quite sure where to go. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get to the inside. The handling's not quite as good on the Cadillac as I would like. Carlton ends up running very, very wide. And again, you'll see the straight line speed of the Cadillac as we come down the start. Finish straight, and I have just about managed to get the move done eventually. It's only taken me sort of half a lap. Go into the first corner again. I'm being a little bit careful because I'm not quite sure what the Cadillac's going to do. The Carlton's trying to go all the way around the outside of me. That's uh, not the place you really want to be for the next couple of corners, but he's going to give it a go anyway. So good, we can break it into the second corner. Carlton's still trying to go around the outside. He's on the inside for the next bit. But then the, the corner after that, the important one, I now have the inside line. Uh, however, the Carlton has so much more grip, he almost manages to get the move done right around the outside. There's a little bit of a touch there, but uh, we both get away with it without slowing each other down too much. And then it's onto another straight where the Cadillac has the advantage. Again, you're seeing how difficult it is to overtake a car that is faster than you in a straight line. Although uh, everything goes a little bit wrong for me, I just managed to outbreak myself. I'm trying to get my car turned to do a bit of a cutback, but uh, now the Carlton has got the place. So this is a, is a little bit later on. I think this is on the same lap. And yep, sure enough, I club the curb this time a bit too much. Almost roll it. Very, very nearly roll that. I'm amazed I managed to save it. However, I did have a spin. And that's it. That's uh, My race with the Carlton is gone. Uh, the, the M5 has got past me as well. Yeah, I, I'm a bit annoyed about that one. Uh, my own stupid fault for attacking the curb too much. But uh, it's a shame because that was a really close race with that Carlton. So we go back to the front again, and this is pretty much the most exciting thing uh, in this whole race. This this battle for the lead went on for four laps, or for the entirety of the race, which was like ten minutes. Uh, it's a fantastic race. So we come down towards the hairpin. This is on to the final lap. The Alpha is still trying to find its way past the Aston Martin. As the Aston Martin goes defensive, uh, the Alpha is going to try and do a bit of a cutback, and this time it is going to work. It's on the inside for the next corner to so come on to the straight. Uh, now they are neck and neck going onto the straight. The Alpha has the better run onto the straight, so his the, sort of the straight line speed advantage of the Aston Martin is slightly less than normal. Uh, they come up towards the next corner. Alpha breaks a little bit early. The Aston Martin is very brave and <laughs> manages to drive all the way around the outside. Well done on that one. I can't decide which is overtake of, of the evening, uh, whether it's that, because that's blooming impressive to manage to do that, or whether it's the Carlton uh, on the inside of two people. Um, yeah, I don't know. People in the in the comments section have a vote which one you think is more spectacular. Both are pretty damn impressive, uh, <laughs> I have to say. Anyway, they didn't hit the curb too much. Nobody rolled through that. I don't think anybody actually rolled the entire evening, except for me, not almost, um, which sounds about right. 
uh, I was I was concerned that with the, with these sort of cars, that people would end up rolling them, running race suspension, race tyres, um, but nobody did. It was just me. I was also surprised at how amazingly sort of competitive and clean all of the racing was. Um, I was expecting these cars to be a right nightmare. Having them in A-Class, they probably wouldn't handle very well. I put them in A-Class to allow the M5s, the Audis and so on to race, and there was only the Porsches and my Cadillac were the only cars. Like, oh, is the Aston Martin A-Class standard? Maybe the Aston Martin is. But uh, yeah, none of the M5s or Audis were used, which did surprise me. Anyways, they come around the final corner. The Alpha is too far back and can't challenge for the win so it's going to go to the Aston Martin in a very very exciting final race there there was some really very close racing going on in that one um, well between between some people there <laughs> was some very close racing um, at the back you saw the Chevy Volt at the start uh, I'm surprised somebody used this but uh, there was a Chevy Volt it didn't come last it came 10th out of 11 I think Again, there were connection issues with this final race. It was a nightmare. But um, yay for the Chevy Volt. It didn't come last. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was there was a lot of excitement going on with a few of the battles in that final race. Uh, there wasn't as much excitement going on elsewhere. So yeah, you only see sort of f four or five cars in that video because that was where all the excitement was. Um, except for kind of at the start. Anyway, that is it for A-Class Sedan Racing. It was surprisingly successful, and it was a, a highly enjoyable highly enjoyable evening of racing, even if the internet was being a bit of a pain. Um, uh, but yeah, I can't really do much about that. I can't wait for Forza 5. Yay for servers that work. Um, anyway, next week's race, or in fact technically this week's race, because it is going to be run uh, as per normal on... Where's my calendar gone? Thursday the 5th of September we are going to be running C-Class Roadsters uh, that means uh, again the same as for sort of with this race was uh, if you go to the uh, if you go to a private lobby or whatever uh, when you go to the advanced options you can go to body type I will be setting that to Roadster so they are the cars that you can use there are also websites I'll find one and put it in the description uh, so that you can see the available cars uh, you can use whatever upgrades that you would like on them I'm not going to have any restrictions for that and none of the cars from that list are banned uh, time wise it is going to be at 7 p.m. British summer time uh, and it will probably last for a few hours um, again all of this information uh, can be found on our forums and if you wish to sign up and you wish to take part then that is where you can do it again I'll put a link in the description to the forums and that is how you sign up to this race I think that's it for today so thank you very much for watching everybody and until next time goodbye <laughs>